Hey, it's me, OG Duffy, back with another Versus video. Now, this week's video is from a 1984 very original arcade game, and it is this, Bomb Jack. Let's get to it. We're going to look at the different versions, coin-op conversions, of this Bomb Jack game. Now, a very original title from 1984, uh, and we're going to be looking at two areas that I'm going to judge, okay, for the comparisons, etc. So first off, we're going to be doing the 8-bit home computer systems, or the usual suspects as they have become known on the channel. So I'm going to be looking at the Commodore 64, the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, and the Amstrad CPC conversions of Bomb Jack. Then, I will be looking at the 16-bit home computer systems of the time, which of course are the Commodore Amiga, and of course the Atari ST. Let's see how them two square up. And finally, I will take a look at the Game Boy version. But obviously, I will not be comparing that to any other systems because it's the only one we're looking at, okay? So, remember, stick around to the very end and see which one wins out of the 8-bit home computers and which version wins out of the 16-bit home conversions. But before we get to it, as always, let's go take a look at the arcade version first. This is Bomb Jack. Released in 1984, uh, Tekken dropped Bomb Jack into the arcades. You play as a hero named, you guessed it, Jack, who has the ability to jump very, very high. At any point during your jab, if, uh, jump, if you repeatedly tap the button, you'll find that you actually glide. You can uh, glide the character around, and then when you release, he starts falling, etc. Um, the aim of the game is, quite, is to clear the screen of all the bombs that you see. Quite straightforward, really, but obviously you need to avoid the enemies uh, as you collect the bombs. Uh, and uh, there's a power meter at the very top there that you can see, and that fills up. And when that fills, you get the bonus disc that come out. And when that comes, you hit that, it turns the uh, the enemies into coins, and you pick them up for extra points, etc. During the game, other bonuses also drop. These include like a, a B, which stands for bonus points. I think it multiplies by five times. Oh, you get an E, which is an extra life, and a very rare, rare one, this S, which is a special, which gives you the, an award, which means you get an extra credit, a whole free game. Now, that was unheard of. Uh, the game featured five different stages, each with its own unique backdrop and platforms in different places, and gradually increased in uh, difficulty as you cleared each screen. A highly original game, very playable in the arcades, but how well did this convert to the home computer systems of the day? Let's now take a look at the 8-bit systems. Let's kick off with the Amstrad CPC first. The Amstrad version plays relatively well. Um, seems to have been coded the same as the Spectrum, uh, but the programmers made good use of the Amstrad color palette. Uh, which is nice to see that they opted to do this because quite often they would choose to be quite lazy in their programming and uh, just stick with a monochrome sometimes. Um, but they chose to stick to the colours, which was nice. Uh, sound effects are good um, and pretty much as you would expect overall. Uh, it's a very playable version. It retained the playability of the arcade version, which, let's be honest, is what we were all looking for back in the day. Um, and I would not have been disappointed if I'd have got this version. Um, it's nicely done. Uh, I think the sprites could have been a bit clearer on some of the, uh, the the figures, mainly Bomb Jack himself. But overall, I'm really impressed with this. Uh, I quite enjoyed this version. Um, so, anyway talking about the ZX Spectrum version which I mentioned earlier because quite often as you know they're quite similar the uh, Amstrad and Specky versions except for a few colours um, let's go take a look at the Specky version now let's see how that one does now the Sinclair ZX Spectrum version of Bomb Jack now, confession time, this is the home version I remember most from back in the day. I own this on my humble little rubber kid Spectrum, and I played it 
fair bit to. I really enjoyed this game. Um, so I have great, great memories of this. But I need to, on this replay, I had to ask myself, did it live up to them memories? Because quite often, when you revisit these old games, like revisiting old films and stuff like that, they don't always live up to how you remember them. Like my recent Highlander uh, video I did. Um, when I rewatched Highlander recently, it's I loved it when I was a sort of teenager, but revisiting it, it just didn't hold up. It just was, seemed quite cheesy in places, but you know, it is what it is. This version, it plays really well. The graphics look and feel good, and uh, based on the Spectrum's limitations, they did a really good job, I felt. Obviously, it's monochrome, but something we would come to expect from the specky let's be honest we're used to this the sound effects match the gameplay well and overall it does live up to my memories so uh, great job this one a uh, nice conversion of bomb jack this as we come to expect from the commodore 64 it makes great use of its SID chip, and uh, this is no exception. Um, you can hear it features music, while the previous two versions we looked at, the previous two 8 bit versions, did not. It was sound effects only. Um, but uh, has limited game sound effects compared to the others as well. Um, there are some game sound effects, but only a couple, okay? Uh, and they mainly focus on the tune uh, for this one. Um, it plays okay. But strangely, to me, the characters seemed larger, and the level designs, right, the, 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 the levels of each, felt smaller, which to me detracted from the gameplays a bit, you know? Um, I mean, can you guys notice that? Are you getting a feel for that? Does it, do, are you agreeing, disagreeing? Uh, let me know in the comments, please, as always. But overall, this wasn't bad. It featured music, which would have been a bonus on the other systems, but... Is this title enough to make it the winner? Wait till the end of the video, where I'll deliver my verdicts. Is the Commodore 64 coming out on top this week? Or not? Wait and see, and remember to stick around. First of the 16-bit systems we're looking at is the Atari ST version of Bomb Jack. Now, um, as you can guess, these look very similar, the Atari ST and the Amiga version, which we'll come to shortly. Uh, they look and sound very similar, as they do in most of the, uh, the sort of uh, conversions uh, that I've looked at previously. Um, this is not too bad. It sounds nice. It looks great, and it's a nice tune that's playing there. Um, this plays faster than the Amiga version, which we'll look at next, obviously. Uh, we'll see at the end of the video which version of Bomb Jack for the 16-bit home computers comes out on top during my verdict. Now, did you play or own Bomb Jack on any of the systems we've looked at so far? If so, please share your memories. Let me know any information you guys have in the comments about the programming of these games, any facts, any stories you have etc okay because it's always here great to hear your thoughts and your opinions and sharing your knowledge in the community that we're developing here so uh, let me know your thoughts people Following on from the ST version that we just looked at, this of course is the Commodore Amiga version of Bomb Jack, another 16-bit home computer version. Um, this one looks, sounds very nice, um, compares obviously to the uh, ST, uh, very similar between the pair of them, which is usually the case, but slightly different in this one. I don't know if you can notice it, but if you look closely, Bomb Jack himself, he seems to play quite slow he doesn't seem as fast um, and the controls on um, on this version just didn't feel the same they just I don't know it was really weird which affected the playability of the game for me um, but as I say looks very nice sounds very nice but does it have what it takes to beat the Atari ST 
do stick around because coming up very soon I'm going to do my 8-bit and the 16-bit verdicts but before we do that let's go take a look at the only handheld system we're looking at this week for Bomb Jack which is the Game Boy original version of Bomb Jack here we go and finally the Game Boy version of Bomb Jack um, this was released in 92, so this version was released well after the others that we've looked at today. Um, but of course you have to also remember and consider that the Game Boy was only released in 89, so that will account for the lateness in this conversion. Overall it looks and plays really well, the sound isn't bad either, you know, it's quite a nice little conversion. Obviously it's only in monochrome, but of course that is what the Game Boy was all about, uh, as you'd expect. But the playability and overall feel more than made up for this. So if you were into uh, your mobile gaming at the time, you, know, you got this on your uh, Game Boy, I would not have been disappointed. Now, do stick around because we're about to do the, uh, the uh, comparison opinions. Who wins on the 8-bit and the 16-bit home computer versions. So without further ado, let's get to my verdicts. I hope you enjoyed looking back at the game that was Bomb Jack. A very unique, I don't know, would you describe it as a platformer? I'm not quite sure, really. It was, it was good. It was very original, very good. I uh, have great memories of this. Okay, so let's get to the verdicts now. Now, first off, the 8-bit home computer systems. I can feel a bit of controversy coming on today following this video, following this... Um, Judgment, shall we say. Um, a galactic controversy. Okay, but don't be hating on the video. Hit the like and all that good stuff, but comment, all right? If you think I'm wrong, tell me why. Right, here we go. In third position, I'm giving it to the Commodore 64. Yes, I know what you're thinking. What are you thinking, OG? Rob, you've got it wrong. I'm sorry. I'm judging it on gameplay, all right? Yes, the Commodore 64 had the Sid Chip music going on that the others didn't. Yes, the Commodore 64 was was bright and stuff, but um, as I said during the video, it just didn't look or feel right to me. The sprites seemed big on the characters and uh, the game screen seemed small, if that makes sense. Uh, which I think affected the overall gameplay for me, all right? So, controversial, I know, but Commodore 64 is in third, which means in second position, which obviously gives away what the winner is, I gave seconds to the Amstrad CPC. So in first position, I gave it to the Sinclair ZX Spectrum version of Bomb Jack. Why? Now... Maybe I have let my head rule my heart a bit on this one. But I do remember and have this game great fond memories of Bomb Jack on the Sinclair ZX Speccy. Being cramped around my little, you know, rubber keyboard and playing it. And I'll be honest, it played really well. It was a great conversion. All right. It didn't have the colours uh, for the sprites and stuff that the others had. But the gameplay on this was really well done. The sound effects worked well with it, and uh, it just played brilliantly. So for that reason, I'm giving it to the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Now, don't be hating, honestly, but do let me know in the comments. Do you agree with this? You know, what are your memories of it? So that concludes the 8-bit home computer systems. Now onto the 16-bit. So we had the Commodore Amiga versus the ST. Now, typically, when I've done these sort of judgments, because they're both fairly similar systems, there's never really a lot between them. Usually, the Amiga takes it. Does it do the same this week? Well, both systems looked and sounded fairly good. Looks really nice. But the ST version takes it this week. Well done, Atari ST. A great win for you guys. The reason being, it just played better. It seemed faster. Uh, the Amiga version seemed a bit sluggish. It was just a bit slower. And I think the sound was just that little bit crisper on the, uh, on the Atari ST version. So the Atari ST takes it. Well done. A good win, ST. So, the final version we looked at, of course, was the Game Boy. Um, just threw that in there because it was another version to look at. Obviously, the only handheld version we had. There have been uh, uh, unauthorised um, um, 
versions of this released, I think, on the Game Boy Advance, which were straight ports. One from the Amstrad version, I believe, and one, I think, was a straight... I'm not sure which version, but another a port. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't an original completely on its own. So the Game Boy did very, very well. I really liked it. It was playability was good on it, and it was a real, real good conversion on that for a handheld. So all in all, very, very good. Now, before I go, just a massive thank you to you guys for your subs. A massive thank you for the likes you give me. And thanks for the community spirit that you guys all bring. Your knowledge and wealth of knowledge that you guys know about these classic games is second to none. So do let me have your thoughts, opinions, etc. in the comments, please. And as always, keep it nice. Anyway, I've been OG Duffy. You've been awesome. Till next time.